Good afternoon, everybody. Hope you're ha fucking hell. Jesus. Good afternoon, everybody. Hope you're having a fantastic day. All right, so drama over. I'm alive. Do not worry. Don't send me any get well soon cards because I'm okay. I'm okay. You don't have to do that. So today we are going to see Lauren Tickner. Now, oh, awesome. Thank you. Um, now, Lauren, she's she's wicked. She's uh, I think she's like 20 or 21. Um, doesn't really matter how old she is, but she is someone that has been able to generate a, a huge following on Instagram and on. Um, on YouTube as well, and really has focused her, her personal brand around teaching people about personal branding, particularly within the kind of fitness, health and wellness space. So what I wanted to do today was actually go to hers because I, it's, although it's near me, it's not like I can't walk there, it's a drive, so we're gonna, we're gonna drive there. Um, but anyway, so we're gonna go interview her, we're gonna ask her like loads of little questions about how she's been able to do it, advice that she can give for people like you and me, uh, because I'm gonna get a lot of value out of speaking to her, so uh, I hope you guys do too. So let's, let's move to the next scene. Let's go to the car. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the M25. It's glorious in its, its ability to get us from destination A to destination A. I'm getting, I'm getting some memories coming back because I'm going around the Kingston area uh, in Surrey, if you, if you guys know that. Uh, that's where I went to uni and I spent a lot of years here and a lot of fun memories, uh, some interesting memories, but also this is where I really kind of did my first real entrepreneurship, right? And that was, when I used to work for Ted Baker, right? So I was a, a temp for Ted Baker in one of the stores in Mental Center in, in Kingston. And um, they didn't keep me on, which is brilliant. Because what I then went to do is I was like, damn it, I don't want to get another crappy job. Uh, I'm gonna start teaching guitar. So I decided that I would start putting out flyers. I got some flyers made, they're really crap. And I started handing them out and stuff like that. And I got a few, basically a few people um, to teach guitar to, which is really cool. So like mostly kids, uh, one adult, and started making, you know, cash in hand. And I used to go and spend that money on nights out and stuff like that. Um, if anyone knows the area, like I hang out, I used to hang out in Amagi in Oceana. <laughs> those were, uh, those were my areas that I like to go. Uh, many fun nights there. Um, not anymore though, because I can, I just, I, the amount of alcohol I used to drink was stupid. Um, I don't condone that whatsoever, but it was really fun. So, uh, driving down these roads, I haven't, I literally haven't down, driven down this road, it's the A3. I haven't driven down this road since I used to go to uni. So, um, yeah, there's a lot of memories coming back, which is quite nice. So, it's, I think what I'm gonna do is after I meet Lauren and we do an interview, I might even pop into Kingston just to have a look around. But also at the same time, I might not. So, <laughs> uh, probably mostly not. But here we go, we're nearly there, so, the next clip you're, you will see will be uh, probably the interview. So uh, yeah, we'll, we'll get into it in a second. All right, we're we recording. <laughs> All right, so here we are with Laura and Tigna. Before I talk too much, I'm gonna let her introduce herself, give, uh, give us a little bit of backstory for you guys. Yeah, so hello everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in today. So my name is Lauren, like you just said, and I'm a 21 year old entrepreneur helping other people build their personal brand, monetize their personal brand, and essentially make the most of it, leave an impact in the world, and do all sorts of cool things. Awesome, okay, and how long have you, so you're 21, right? Yes. Okay, cool, so uh, a little bit younger than me, but most of you guys that watch me are probably around that that sort of age as well. Yeah, I find there's nice. a lot of people who are in e-commerce, yeah. especially who are pretty young, which I think is really cool getting into it at such a young age. Exactly. I have a lot of people reach out to me like 16, like, can I do e-commerce? I'm like, hell yes, you can. It's amazing. Exactly. Um, so can you give us a little bit of backstory about um, maybe how you got to the place you're in and you know, what are the, maybe the big issues that you face? Because I know you started kind of your personal brand when you were quite young. Mm. Um, where a lot when of I was 16, exactly, exactly. Yeah. I so was that age. What were, the, what were the, the issues that you faced? What were like, all the successes? And kind of how did it bring you to where you are now? hundred percent. So I started out off in the fitness industry, literally made an account called Fitness Life Lauren. And back then I started because I saw that there was this massive fitness community on Instagram and I didn't know about fitness YouTubers and all this, but I basically saw all these people commenting, having uh, supporting one another. And I was like, I want to be friends with these people because I was, 
like I said, I was 16, nobody else was doing what I was doing, nobody, no other girls were lifting weights, and so basically started documenting, and if you go way back on my Instagram, the photos are absolutely appalling and are embarrassing. They on there? Yeah. Uh, we'll, yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll put it up on the screen. To have fun <laughs> scrolling back over 2,000 photos. But basically, I cut my face out of all the photos because I didn't want my friends to find me. It was a private account. Really long story short, I then decided to make it public because I found that people were tagging their friends in my photos, but they couldn't actually see the photo because I was private. And people wanted to share my recipes because I was sharing so many protein, healthified recipes. And I was just giving out all this free value without even realizing that I was doing exactly what you should be doing in order to grow your personal brand. I didn't even know what a personal brand was back then, right? So um, made it public. The boys in my year found it, 17 years old, bullied. Oh. What were you gonna say? I was bet they loved it. They hated it. <laughs> Literally, they posted a photo. I was friends with like all the, you know, popular people, whatever. So there's a lot of kind of mockery that goes yeah, on. Right. That genuinely like they were being horrible about it and they were supposed to be my friends and so then they posted to that one of their own instagram accounts just ripping me to shreds i don't mm. want to swear but you know they you were swear, swear. they were absolutely fucking ripping the shit out of me and so um basically i was gonna stop and then i decided to continue long story short this was like four years ago now and um essentially built my fitness business by selling digital products because I just really, I started doing fitness coaching and like I was like, you know what, I really want to make my income as passive as possible because I was working a nine to five job, this job was sucking life out of me, making me so unhappy. Then I quit that, ended up going to work at, sorry, not going to work, I ended up, then I quit that and I decided to go to university. So I enrolled in the UK's number one business course at the Uni of Bath. Um, and I realized like, okay, I need to try and make a passive income because I can't be working on a full-time business while I'm doing all these other things because making content, as I'm sure you're aware, is a full-time job in itself. So basically I started selling fitness eBooks, sold a few thousand of them, and that was like my first start in online business. And I was like, this is amazing, like digital yeah. marketing, like all this stuff. And I started getting really interested in it. And I was like, I just made all this money and I was able to help so many people, all thanks to my personal brand. Well, when you, can I take you back to that moment, right? Yeah. Just before you released your first eBook, what were your concerns about doing it? I think the did biggest you, did thing, you have yeah, I was just worried like there was a lot of competition and I was worried that people weren't going to buy my ebook, but thousands of people ended up buying it because I had created this community online and because people were kind of, I suppose, invested in my journey and they wanted to support me as well. People were literally asking me, Lauren, when's your ebook going to come out? Because then what happened was after I launched mine and around the time that I launched mine, every single girl in the UK in the fitness industry was releasing a fitness ebook, but I just decided to set mine apart to make it really evidence-based and science-based so that it was had so many pages and so much valuable content. Um, and so that was it. I was just so worried that because everyone was doing it because it was so overly saturated, no one would buy, but if you build up a community, then people will buy, and that's the power of your personal brand. So if you were to give advice to someone that is looking to start up a personal, or any brand actually, because any brand you start up is all about giving value. Yeah, right? we can yeah. do that. Um, and what advice would you give someone that is maybe a little bit hesitant about trying to monetize their whatever their brand is? Like, I know a lot of people will come to you and probably say, oh, "I'm not good enough to sell something. I'm mm. not. I'm all not ready time. to sell it." Yeah. What's the advice you give someone? I think that is in this situation a big difference between a personal brand and then a business brand. Yeah. So when you're a business you're there because you're selling something. It's kind of a prerequisite to have business. You have to be selling something. Exactly, okay, yeah. whereas when it comes to a personal brand, if you literally start your account and you're like, I sell coaching on this thing, people aren't gonna necessarily listen to you because well, you haven't given them any, any free value. So I think when you're a personal brand, you really need to give that value before anything else. It's like giving value every single day. It's, it has to be consistent and it has to be targeted for your ideal client. And I do think that there are actually way fewer differences between a business 
brand and a personal brand than a lot of people think. But I think a lot of times, when it, especially when it comes to a personal brand, people worry about their logo, they worry about their fonts, <laughs> their colors, and all this rubbish. But what's actually important is the content that you're putting it out. And if it's valuable for your specific target audience, like you need to have a niche and you need to go all in on that niche. Because if you're trying to serve everybody, then you're going to serve nobody. And I think that that's something that so many people forget. And they just try to be like all these big influencers that they see. But these influencers can do post the content that they're posting because they've already built a tribe of raving fans. So if they then go on holiday and they start posting outfit of the day, even though they normally would be posting like business focus, like how to grow your Amazon. People are gonna love it, yeah. Ty Lopez is a great example, just takes videos of his shoes every day. Boom, exactly, he can do that. If you do that, people don't care. They just think, what is this Ponzi twat doing? Yeah, but why are you wearing the same shoes again? Right, exactly, <laughs> and they'll just, it's, it's just pointless. So give value first and don't expect anything back. Like people aren't gonna follow you because they think that you're cool. They're gonna follow you because they want something from you. They want content from you. People go on social media, like either to kill some time or to just browse. Like I go on social media personally to gain value from the people that I like to follow. For example, I might be following, I don't know, let's just take a random example, like Grant Cardone. I might go on to Grant Cardone's page because I know that he's gonna be adding some value to my life in some certain way. I don't follow him just for the lols, like, yeah, you know? To see what he's doing one day. Exactly. Yeah. Like, it's a very selfish thing. It's a personal brand, you think it's, oh, people from the outside might think, a personal brand is a selfish thing for you, but it's actually selfish for the other person who's following you because they follow you for a selfish reason. It's not actually selfish, but just get what I'm saying. So um, they're following you for them, not for you. Yeah. Even though it's a personal brand, they're following you for them. Okay, that's wicked. And what has like, your personal brand allowed you to do? What is it, what opportunities have it given to you? Because like, I know, and you know, there's so many things just that people don't see on face value. Yeah. So what's, what's your personal brand allowed you to do over the past few years? Oh God, so many things. I guess the initial things that come to mind is like Disneyland Paris took me out there to go run a half marathon for them. Some people that sounds like hell for me. Does, it was amazing because I love horrible. fitness. Um, <laughs> I got a free holiday in Universal Orlando. Like I've had free trips to Bali. Where else have I been? Just all these places. Oh, just got back from Lanzarote. Um, um, in America, when I'm going there in a couple months to LA, all these hotels are giving me free stays, like free restaurants, like it's just all this random stuff. Are, that are you they get. reaching out to you? Sometimes, yeah. or sometimes I'll just send them a quick DM yeah. and they'll reply being like, yeah, let's organize it, let's do it. Um, but I guess the biggest thing is like, it's allowed me to build a business mm -hmm. that is my own, because I think when people, like I just said, rely on brands for their whole entire income, that's what you see a lot of influencers doing, especially kind of in the fashion or beauty space, they are, it's not your own and it doesn't really necessarily allow you to dictate your own time and your Can own. Can you just give an example of maybe, because I know what you're saying, but what would be an example of someone that does that? What kind of brand? Oh, right. So somebody who's always posting like, I don't know, let's just say Miss Pap. That's a female clothing brand. And every single post is like, wearing Miss Pap, wearing Miss Pap. And like, they don't necessarily have their own business, these influencers. They just rely on other brands to pay them to make posts. Whereas like, I realized early on that that's not what I want to do. It looks spammy, it's annoying, and people get bored of it and they don't really care about you, they care about the brand. You become an extension of the brand. This is massive in the fitness industry. I used to be sponsored by a company called Gymshark and they gave me free clothes, they paid me every month and I just became an extension of their brand. I was no longer Lauren Tickner, I was Lauren Tickner, the, gym, the Gymshark athlete. Mm -hmm. And so this was really important for me to actually build my own business that was mine. And so it's allowed me to, you know, create a six-figure business for myself just from like, just, Doing, just doing my thing and just <laughs> providing value, the type of value that my audience wants. Um, so it's amazing. Yeah, That's it's pretty cool. That's awesome. Now you mentioned something in there which I think um, what we're going to do, guys, is I want to do another video with Lauren about this topic. Uh, let us know down in the comments if you want to see that because we'll, we'll get marketing. well no so you mentioned something about the reaching out to hotels and stuff like ah, that yeah. um, and and equally I think it would be interesting for people to know about that but also because of all the guys and girls here do e-commerce and they mm -hmm. have brands they want to reach out to, to influencers for like sponsorship and stuff like that so maybe we can do a video about how to kind of get yourself you know into the eyes of the, the 
the kind of influencer you want, rather yeah. than just be like a spam message. For sure, definitely. It's an interesting one for me as well because I have um, done e-commerce in the past, I've got a few e-commerce plans coming up in the future that I'm working on right now. So I've been in the position of the influencer, as much as that word is cringe. I've also been in the position of the brand and I've also worked at an influencer marketing agency. Um, and I do a bit of freelance like influencer marketing stuff on the side as well, mainly for like PR brands. Mm -hmm. um, so I know the market super well, so that would be cool. Awesome, so make sure yeah, make sure you stick around for that one because we're not going to put it in this video, we're going to put it in a whole separate video and we'll click bait to like. So make sure you're subscribed. Yeah, notifications. <laughs> um, but yeah, we're going to do that. So if you are if you are someone that is looking to have a brand, start a brand, leverage social media, online influencer type people uh, like Laura, and then what we're going to do is do a video to teach you how to actually get your products or services in front of the eyes of hopefully thousands of people. Um, millions. With millions, yeah, why the hell not? Hundreds why why of shoot low when you can shoot high, you know? Sorry. Um, right, so we're going to wrap that video up. Now, the first thing I want to do is just say, uh, if you have any questions for Lauren, I want you to leave them down in the comments. If you can hang around for the next couple of days on the video, then just ask people's questions. I can reply back. Second thing we want to do is make sure you go and follow uh, Lauren. I'm going to put her hand, handle thing, her link, just down below, social links. And of course, smash the like button because that's what we do on YouTube, of course. Um, and we will see you, I guess, in the next installment. Only if they comment asking for it. Oh yes, yeah. Yeah, we're definitely only gonna do it if you comment. <laughs> awesome, thank you very much. Bye.